Now here is my dilemma. I drive two or three quarter hours up here to the River Wye. Hundreds of swims and a walk half, over half a mile pushing a barrow and there's somebody in the swim. I guess it's either a red hot swim or they recognise it from our films. It's the way it is. But my problem being, Woody, the local tackle shop here in Hereford, is the man to see point you in the right direction of the swim. He said, if there's somebody in that swim, Graham, go upstream. There's a life belt, which is just over there, and a swim either side of the life belt. It's a sort of beachy area, but because the river might be just up a tad. He's drawn me this little map here. No one I can't find anything, it's upside down. And I've come through, I can see the life belt, and there's a swim there. I'll just show it to you people, because I mean, look, I, I get this a lot. People say, oh, what you want to do is by the third tree on the left, the chub lay between the third and the fourth tree. And then I blank, they see me in the evening, not on this river, other rivers, and they say, oh, no, 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 not that tree, that tree. Well, it makes a huge difference if you're, if you're a local as to knowing exactly where to drop your bait. So I don't fancy fishing that. I can't see I'd have to fish it up here. It's not trodden down at all. So I'm wondering if the first swim he means <gasps> he went on the brambles and the stingers then, and even worse, I think I've already done that one. That's their responsibility. It's either that or Smith. I'm looking at this one. There's a really nice one up here. I think I will show them to you before I'm desperate to start fishing. I left at six in the morning. It's caught to 11, I haven't put a bait in the water. This swim's been bashed down a bit, so I figure it's fished. And Woody says fish three quarters of the way across there. I'll show you this other swim while I'm at it. Whew. I'm tired, exhausted, I'm too old for all this. Fingers crossed I get to get a fish. I'm after my beloved barbel, which really, I suppose, probably would be my favourite freshwater fish. I don't fish from anything like I used to. I used to go down the Hampshire Haven. Fishing on the royalty, well, no, no more. Come up to the river, why? Big river, powerful river. I guess more fish, bigger river. Now this one, here, the leaves over there give me the line of the pace. I want to fish in here for actually for chub and bike. It looks so good. But I don't know if to fish it from up here, on the top here, or obviously where guys go down there. So I figure I'm going to go for this one. But the swim up here is a very good one as well. I mean, guys, just... Just look at this setting there. Blue sky, church in the background, cattle grazing on a pasture. Could you ask for anything more? Yes, I could be fishing in that other swim. I'll show you this one anyway. See, the thing is, as I march along here looking at my own shadow, this is the only friend I've got to talk to, by the way. This guy down here, the shadow. Now look at this one. That is a superb open swim. It tells me the way it's trampled here that these gentlemen sooner or later are going to come down for a drink, or ladies. That looks really good. Can you imagine running a big, big chunky float across the back there? And if I fished here, I've got two days. The second one I could go down there, or two sessions, I should say. It's not even a day. The day's gone virtually. Well, let's make a decision. I think I'm going to go for this, this top one. Just hope, hope it's the swim on the map. Going to fish two quiver tip rods, even quivers. Whatever I've got, six pound line, something like that and uh, swede, uh, swim feeders and pellet for bait. So I'm going to be using, got plenty of ground bait, got quite a few pellets, but I want to get them on the bottom. I don't want to loose feed them because they're going to disappear in this fast, powerful, wide current. Just get me one barbel. A couple of chub and one barbel and I'll be a happy bunny. Well, one chub and two barbel would be even better. I'm going to have to lump some of this down there. I can't... Uh, I can't be pushing the barrow all the way down there. One bramble, oh, no, I'll be going rolling down here. Not the easiest one to negotiate. Well, now I've got down here, I don't like it. I think it's too shallow here. I need to be further upstream. I think I'm going to have to go for that big beach one, guys. I can't describe it. It's just a pace picks up here. Goes into those rapids. Call the stream we there. By the time my cast get dragged around, my feet is not going to be right. I'm going to go for the other one. Oh, God. All the way back. 
Right, jumpers off, sleeves rolled up. I've come down the, uh, appears to be the north face of Annapurna, and I'm actually on this balance precariously on some little ledges that they must cut out to put their tackle boxes. But I like to strike right-handed, so I can't put my rod in there because there's all water. So it's a bit of a bit of a weird one. I feel like I should have my rods down that side and put the chair here, but it's all lopsided. Anyway, I've got the, uh, I've got a couple of baits out there. I'm, I'm not putting the ground bait in. Normally, I pile a load of ground bait in first, and then find my feeders out. But the guy down there that I did speak to in the one and only swim, swim that I wanted a fish said he's lost loads of gear. So not a bad, not a bad uh, move coming up here, I hope. So instead of putting the ground bait in, which could be in amongst the snags and putting the feeder in, I am putting the feeders out first, have a little sort of bump around just to see where the weed beds are, if anything. There's a nice flow there and it's slack on the inside. So I should get a good bite if I do get one. It's, it's not like they're gonna <clears throat> pull out of position. I don't think they'll pull out of position. I started with the uh, quiver tip sections. I had one cast. It wasn't man enough to get these giant feeders out there. No question of that. I think I'm far enough away from the other swim. I'm actually in a bit of a deep area. <clears throat> and I'm working on that bit of shadow line over there to try and give me a sort of target. Now, that was a tiny bump. That was a tiny bump. What I've got to make sure I don't do, and this is what I normally make the mistake of, leaving my feeders out too long. It was male story up on the River Severn, who ran a big tackle shop there. He was a master at fishing the swim feeder and the float indeed. And uh, used to come down when we were struggling and, and just pull a fish out in front of us. Quite, it's almost embarrassing really. But, you know, he was a top class matchman, good angler. But he said, there was a row of anglers hard just sitting there like gnomes. He said, what are they all doing? I said, well, he's all driving for barbel. He said, well, you won't catch barbel like that. You've got to put feed in especially fast flowing. He said, the minute that feed is empty, it's gone. All the small fish eat it. And I know that. I do know all the minnows down there are going to eat all the ground bait. So I've got to try and work it that every five minutes, bang cast. Every five minutes, cast. So I just mixed up my ground bait, which is a mix of two milk horse pellets, some bran and some Baileys. And I've got a little bit heavy on the Baileys, number one, trying to make it um, fairly stiff. So provided I can bump these feeders around and I'm happy where they are and they're not snagging next time I bring them in, I will actually put some pellets in there, mix it all up, put them in the, in the ground bag and fire it out in the feeder so the pellets are around my feeder. I've got one pellet, a large size, on the hook. I think it might be an 8 mil, um, and it's, it's a bit bigger. You know, it's like you fish a bigger bait, you think, oh, I'll get a big barbel. Doesn't always work that way, does it? So, get some pellets in this ground bait, and then I'm going to recast and start working the swim up. I've got a load of pellets in this... Uh, Sweetie jar. I'll put that in to keep them nice and nice and fresh. Poor, perhaps not, not as fresh as I thought. So I've mixed my ground bait up here and I'm going to scatter in plenty of pellets in there. I do have plenty of pellets. There's no point taking them at home. But this keeps them sealed up nice and tight. And they also help break up in the feeder as well and I'm going to fire some of these out in the ground bait balls themselves. going to make I think about 10 or a dozen balls because I'm so late starting there's 25 to 12 and I'm sort of not really 100% sure I'm in the right swim I think I am. That's it it's quite gluey. There's all these minnows down here you can see some maybe down there I'll show you later on down there there's lots of little what looks like this year's minnow fry. They will nibble away and eat everything. So I make some balls up and then I get ready to uh, bomb them out, hoping I can reach them with a catapult. I've got a ground bait catapult, I'll show you that in a minute. In fact, I'm gonna put them on this lid. I wanna make them fairly tight and about the same size as say a feeder of ground bait would make. Normally I would put stones in these to stop them rolling away. But looking at that current, I think generally they should sit on the bottom. And spray them around a bit. I can easily, I've got quite a bit of ground bait, so not a problem. I'll make them all the same size. Do try and make your ground bait balls when you're doing this around about the same size. If you suddenly have one that's light, it's going to fly too far. If you make one that's too big, it's going to be a little bit heavier. 
and you'll be fishing it short and all you're doing then basically is moving the fish all over the place you're spreading them around you want to try and retain some degree of accuracy and what I want to do is is plonk them in a line like this so they break away so I can have one feeder here one feeder here and there's a line of feed working its way down rather than one big clump that I might overcast or indeed undercast right oh, it's a wee bit or something up there Oh, I think I've got it out. I have to watch that one. I think the inside one is uh, okay. I've got it all back anyway. And I've lost. Now I've still got my hook bait. So, I've got my feed there. Don't want to pack it in too tight, but I do want it coming out. That's the main thing with a feeder. So that one's there ready to go. I've got my ammo, my ammo dump there. Just going to check this other rod. I've got the, uh, that's clear, slightly left. I've got the buzzers there, purely because I'm filming, I'm turned to look away. I don't want to lose a rod, it would just give me a bit of advance notice. That one, I did have a tiny bite on, and it looks like the, uh, the banded pellet's gone. So let's get these two done, filled up nice mix of dindins for them fresh banded pellet and I'm going to fire these out so I've got my pellet bander I put the band in there I'm going to put this time if I can find one one of these smaller pellets on there pinch one out of the ground bait I don't really put more with ground bait so they don't slip okay and then all you do, take your hook link, when I fish, I'll show you in a minute what I'm fishing. And then you just take, just take your hook link and just slide the hook bend under the band, under that, let's put it like that for you. It's under that band there. And I've got about, I'm just showing you, a good three feet there. Then the feeder, buffer bead shocker. So, there's my feeder. This is a heavier feeder, so I'm gonna assume this will be the up upstream one. If I can get it. Quite a way over that one. Bang, it's down. I'm just shielding it for the sun. That's it. Move once. I think I'm in the clear there. I think that was in the clear. That can go down. Just ease the drag a little bit. In case I get a huge crash take. That's why I've got it there. That's why I've got the buzzers. Second one can go out. It's well over in the shade there. If anything, wow, it's more current out there and it's deeper. Wow, that feels like a good one. Okay. In fairness, the feeder I've got on the left could actually be a bit too much, too much weight for the uh, for the rod. Right, I'm going to wet the uh, ground bait pouch. You've seen this before. This is a a rigid pouch. You don't want one that crushes the ball of ground bait because it has squeeze a ball of ground bait apart and then it will break up in flight. Listen, I'm no matchman, but they're the guys that uh, set the stands for fishing. See where that one goes. Went in with a nice bloop. I've let these balls of ground bait here, let them dry out a bit in the sun. I'm gonna, what they call, fill this in a bit. That one's a short one. Put about six balls of ground bait in, I think. That's a good one. That's going a bit too far downstream, but hey ho. That should be okay. Sometimes you can actually hear the noise they make. They sort of break up. I don't want to break it up if I can help it. That's a good one. 
and I've got some spares and I'm going to keep this from drawing out too much I want that to uh, break up Bailiff just came along and he said that uh, on a ticket check and he said it's been fishing pretty well uh, but it's been changed over the pellet which I'm using oh, a bit late for pellet he said what you want to do is meat hemp and cast in a blocking feeder the highest five or six cast or maggots on the hook so I've got none of that so I'm pretty well stuffed he said they're very very picky on the pellets now because a lot of people were fishing them so that's if I give them a good feed there hopefully that'll get them in the mood I feel a sandwich coming it's been six hours and I'm really just only just starting to fish and I've only got six hours left still maybe tomorrow will be a different day oh by the way it's nice to know I forgot to put the water in I've only got a tiny flask and that's Wait for this, full of cold tea. Not been a good day. Well, no doubt you've noticed I have a little rearrangement of my uh, table chair area. Managed to push the, uh, the soil around here a little bit. Just tread it down a bit and at least get a flat area so I can get my, my luxury chair in there. No bites. And of course, I now feel a little bit despondent, as the bailiff's told me, I'm on the wrong bait, uh, the wrong swim feeder. <laughs> People, I'm going to sit down for this. I was filling up another feeder. I'm guessing this one's a chub. Not kicking and digging. Balanced up here's a guy over there with a proverbial chainsaw or gyrocopter or something like that. Tell you what, I'm pleased to get a chub. Come on, babe. Come on, babe. In you come. Oh, he stopped it. He stopped it. I've got him. I've got him. I've got him. Oh, nice chub too, people. Let's turn this round before I fall in the water. So maybe pounding that ground bait actually did the trick. Let me show you this one. Oh, there we go. Oh, it's falling out. Really nice chub. Hang on, don't flop. I'm gonna put you back soon, guys. A really nice chub. Great big. Kevin they're called, not Kevin, no not Kevin, at least they're not called Smith. That's a chub, big mouth, they take a big bait but they also take small baits as well but they are known to go for big baits. Well, there he goes. Let me say I am so grateful to at least save the blank and I wonder if pounding that uh, ground bait ball in has actually done it so now just to concentrate that feed in that area I try and sort of work the swim up and see if I can get another one. I was actually going to show you all the minnows that come in here where I wash my hands off and I've got my seating arrangements so good news and it actually pulled that rod right over even though it's not uh, the quiver tip section it's just the Avon rod pulled it right over beep 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 I had my back to, uh, to the rod I would never have known if I didn't have those buzzers so there is a case for using a buzzer in a river. Well it is for me filming anyway. I've got to sort myself out now. All right, now I've leveled this area out, I've had to clean all the mud off my boots but at least there's a flat area I can just sort of balance my chair on and that was on my homemade open end feeder there, see it? Just a homemade one just out of fencing wire it's expendable but I don't want to use it got my little cushioning valve rubber there and I've put my bait I mean, I'm a shocker, really, of the worst one. A matchman would cry. They would absolutely cry the way I set myself up. I have stuff all over the place. Just don't have anything to hand at all. I don't know what it is about me. I've fished like it all my life. I know I catch fish, but it just really, I make life so hard for myself. I'm just going to get this one out there. Around my other rod top. No, no, no. Thank you. <clears throat> just slightly, very slightly downstream. I'm aiming for the line of bubbles that I've always said about barbel and in fact Mark said I just, I just want to bump it once I just want to bump it once and see it's in the clear back the drag off he's actually pulled the rod rest right round got myself in a mess again that's it now number two can go out I may even change this heavy feeder, which I think, given the pace of the current there, I poss possibly don't need.
trying to keep one upstream and one downstream at the moment. I haven't spread them. Once okay. I get them in an area that uh, I don't get hung up in the bottom, I just stick with that area and bait it up. Drag off a touch. So what I was going to show you is that I always find it interesting when I'm sitting around waiting for fish, which is sort of most of the time. <clears throat> if I just drop some ground bait down here, I'll show you this small fish that come up. So just get a little pinch of ground bait, can be a piece of sandwich, anything. I just get fascinated by all these small fish. Just down there. And if you look at that ground bait settling, there they come. All the small minnows all darting around. And they'll all move in on that. I can actually, there's a hole there, so if I chuck some loose stuff further over there, you'll be able to see them zoom in on it. There, now look. Just as a just as a sort of pointer, look how fast they absolutely demolish that ground bait I put in there, and that shows you why you shouldn't leave the feeder out there too long. It's not just the current that's going to take all your feed away. There's going to be all these small fish look racing off with quite big pieces. I'd say that's almost gone. I'll put another piece in just to show you. Obviously, you can't go off with the pellets. There you go guys, you can see it tumbling down through the water. The small ones, these minnows and fry of other species, maybe roach and dace, I think they're primarily minnows, are just zooming around, stirring it all up, look at how they're stirring it up, and I've always been a believer that that's what attracts other fish as well, the fact that they're stirring it up. And that's the enemy, that's where I came, is leaves coming off the trees in the line. Back here. You should be able to see the ground bait there. You can see all the small fish. Very, very shallow water <clears throat> where I've been uh, washing my hands. And you can see they're actually swimming off with bits of ground bait. It will not take long to get rid of all that. And they're demolishing it. Oh, this is so nice just to be able to sit down. Rod's on the right hand. <clears throat> I think I need, if I want to catch a barbel, I think I need to put the lucky awesome hat on. And listen. Just for one o'clock, one chub, I'll take it. It'll be very windy tomorrow, very warm, southerly wind. The bailiff said the witching hour is going to be the time if you want to get a barbel after three, four o'clock. It's a long way to come though, isn't it? Two and a half hours drive, a hundred and something miles just to fish between three and four o'clock, five o'clock. Right, lucky hat time, I feel. Look, it's not lucky all the time. If I put this on and I catch a barbel, I figure it will be lucky. Don't worry, I caught enough fish wearing hats and on hats on and hats off. But it is a bit glary there for me. So I might even be better put my polarizing glasses on. I'm not going to see any fish. It's a way, way out in the river. It's a big river. I'm barely just over halfway in the river. But I'm hoping if I get another bite, <clears throat> I'm going to pound it with some more ground bait, give it three or four balls of ground bait, so you can see how fast they demolish it. In fact, I'm going to give them one now, give them a couple of balls. Ah, better with a pair of polarising glasses. I can't see any fish. Obviously, you know, it's got a tinge of colour in it and I'm obviously 40 yards away from them. Um, I'm going to try, I think, a big hook with a big piece of... I haven't got any lunch on me. All I've got is this stuff, which Mike gave me because Jack's the Jack Russell. There's not much of Jack Russell on he, is there? He said he doesn't really like this stuff. Better not say which it is. But it's turkey, game and veg. But you just peel it back in a foil sachet. It's just a little foil thing. I'm going to cut it in some cubes but I think I need quite a big piece. I maybe need a carp hook or something like that. I figure a chub might get hold of it. So I'm going to try a big bait and also you can see that's going to stand out on the river bit as well. So and the other thing I want to do is change that heavy feeder to a lighter feeder. I'm anchored up there okay. It's holding okay. Not snagging at the moment but I just feel a bit better if I I'd like to be able to just have the current on myself just bump it once. I don't want it too heavy. I guess I cut a good section off it first. I've no idea whether this is going to break up in the water, what it's going to do. 
but it looks awfully like lunch of meat to me. My gut feeling is it might be a bit soft, but I figure, listen, it's worth a try, isn't it? I think with this difference with heavy food, a chance that it might come off. I'm going to give it a go anyway. Well, I've, uh, well, I've changed that feeder over. I've got pellet on the downstream one and a big piece of that um, meat, dog food, on the upstream one with a lighter feeder. I'll show you this feeder I've changed from. That was one of Woody's ones, really, really chunky, heavy one. That's my homemade one, just out of cage feeders. I feel it's a bit lighter. So anyway, we can only try it, can't we? And I might also try a caster to further back in case there's a shoulder chub sitting down the back, feeding off the balls of ground back that I put in there. A very pleasant looking spot, but I need the barbel. Well, boys, it's just not happening. One chub is now five to four, five to four. I have not had one single bite. No gudgeon rattles, nothing, no chub, no bangs, no lime bites. I've gone upstream, I've gone down, I've gone in the middle, I've gone across, I've gone closer. Put all the ground bait balls in. I could put a load more in, but I just feel I'm wasting food for the fish. I've got one more short session tomorrow. If I go up early, I'll go and see in the B and B what time my breakfast is. I just tell them, and I didn't start till so late. It took me so long to drive up here, get the ticket, get the tackle, or get the bait, blah blah blah. Yeah, well, the lucky hat hasn't been so lucky, boys. So I'm going to double up the luck factor with, that's right, the Lucky Hoodie. I need all the help I can get. Ah, sun's just gone round, getting lower. And the uh, magic, by the way, the bailiff's three o'clock. That's when they switch on and the rod comes out of the rest. That's long gone, it's now four o'clock and the rods haven't come out the rest. In fact the wind's getting up, it's getting a bit chilly. I might get lucky and get one fish, one barbel. One barbel is worth six chub to me, absolutely. What to do tomorrow though? Hmm. Still we're not over yet, four o'clock. 6.30, I've got two and a half hours. But I mean, you know when you get bad vibes? I had bad vibes as soon as I didn't get where I wanted to fish. I just don't know the river, I don't know the swims, I don't really know what I'm doing. You need somebody to say point there, that's where you drop the feeder. It's a huge river, could be anywhere. We might get lucky. I think when Woody said cast three quarters of the way over, I don't think, because this is such a big river, I think I'm casting three quarters of the way over and I'm actually mid-river. The reason I'm thinking this is because now I'm sitting down low. I can even see it without polarising glasses. Because I'm sitting down low, the sun's off the water. There is no glistening glare. You always look for the pace of the main current with the leaves going past. OK, so right on the far bank, they're going past. Right on the inside, they're going past. But there's some that are literally three quarters of the way over. And a stream of leaves are going through quicker than the others. It's actually like this. They're actually overtaking the leaves, which I was using as my target, thinking, oh, that's the flow there. I don't think that's the main flow. I think the main flow is another 12, 15 feet further over. The trouble is, I put all my bait in one spot. A lot of it's been eaten, a lot of it's gone. The small minnows and everything have taken it. I can see it, I can see swan's feathers and stuff going down and leaves going down. There definitely, definitely, there is a spot where the current is going stronger and barbel like a strong current, for sure, for sure. And this time of year, they might just not come out of that fast current and swing up. In the summer, 
and early autumn they're going to swing up they're going to be hunting all over when it gets cooler they tend not to move around quite so much yes i think i'm going to give it five minutes i'm going to fire out as far as i can get and see if that feeder will hold out in that slightly faster current who knows i've gone past my baited area but i think it's worth a shot just saw the bite and I am loaded up left hand rod cast it further downstream I haven't got the fish yet almost 99% sure it is please please oh he's stripping me out it's a barbel hopefully it's a barbel I know it's a barbel I've also been looking at the hooks and I've got the hooks I'm using are about size 12. Yeah, this is okay. Not a big hook for a barbel. Barbless. <laughs> oh no, oh no, oh no. I'll settle for this one fish, trust me. Hopefully, guys, you might be able to see this one coming in. Just one barbel, I love this species. Look, it's not a big fish. No, it's not a big fish, but I'll probably put in three times his weight in ground bait and trout pellets. But just the fight they put up is something else. Oh. Still, look, he's still peeling me out now. Just in here. Hopefully there's no branches under there. So take my time, take my time. Don't panic, Graham. Don't panic, Mr. Mannering. I've even got the net. I don't think in you know, 50 or 60 years of fishing there's any such thing I've known as an easy barbel. What a fish they are. Look, look at that, you saw the net. Oh, see how close I got that fish, it just peels out again. But the lucky hat, the lucky hoodie. I won't say that if it pings off, will I? And this one is on the very, very long, long tail I've, I've got from the feeder down to the hook bait. Clearly, it must be five feet, I should think. This is what you've got to watch when you've got the feeder in the air like that. Holy cow, he's peeling me out. I didn't need him in the net. God, now I think I might get him. Oh, why did I say I think I might get him now? We only want to show the folks on YouTube. YouTube? <laughs> it's an Australian program. Here he comes. Get it, get it. I'm not going to pose for it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. This is what I came for. Oh, a lovely barbel. I need to drip everything all down the camera bag. I've got an excuse to get my mat out and we'll take a look at it. There we go, people, a superb fighting fish. I think that's Britain's strongest fish, the barbel. I really think that's Britain's strength, strongest fish. I know it's in a river, but you put a tench in a river, he pull pretty hard as well. But I figure the barbel is our hardest fighting, most doggy fighting fish. You see the barbels on the, on the mouth that they feed? Nice big sucker mouth, but what a beauty. Golden, hey? It is totally awesome. There we go, just gonna put him in via the net let him recover the water's cold so it won't take very long for him to recover there always with barbel just give him a chance to recover especially if you're returning him 
in fast water. Wow, we get in. What a fish, what a river, what a setting. Oh, jeez. I'm on again. Oh, I've got a fish cranking me downstream. Oh, yeah, this is a busted fish. Surely this is a lost fish. Surely this is a lost fish. I can't move, guys. I've got to max this pressure out while I can. I was just about to talk to you, and the rod's gone off mad. I've got to keep this fish moving. I can't even get up at the moment. I can't. I've got the, I've got the camera balanced on my leg. Oh, I just got. I can't risk getting up because I'm going to. I'm going to lose momentum on a fish. I've got to keep it moving. And then I was, trying to, I was just trying to get the camera on my head to let little talk to you, and the rod went kazunk. Right, lucky hat off, camera on. Fingers crossed this fish stays on the line, guys, because I deserve it, I hope. There we go. Let's get you people some action. That was a bizarre take. I just clicked the camera, I thought I'll put it on my knee and as I literally press the button now I've got to look at my other line here I'm going to come under that one carefully carefully don't screw around with barbel I can assure you I might mess around with the old tubby old carp take a few gambles but I'm not not losing pressure on this fish right I can get hold of it now I don't think it's a monster. Check the drag. Always check the drag with barbel. Do not lock it off. Oh yeah, that's a bit bigger fish. Oh, he's coming in nice. He's coming in nice. He's coming in nice. I fear he's going to go away nice. Yes, I thought so. I thought so. That's, look at that bend in the rod, boys. Why do I go barbel fishing? This is why I go barbel fishing. Got to be Britain's greatest fighting fish. Looking fish, scrapping fish. He's got it tangled around his door, so it could work in my favour. We're going on backwind as well. I might sneak this fish in. Sometimes, if he untangles himself, I'm going to be toast. This is a much, much bigger fish. I got him, I've got <laughs> How fate turns around. Oh my god. That's a nice fish. Nice fish. I put the bat away. I thought that's me done. One fish. Wow, we huh. look at this one. OMG. Gotta go down in the mud, risking life and live. That's a much fatter fish. A much fatter fish. It's just nicked in the bottom jaw there. Hook's gonna pop out, but well, falls out. Look at that one. That's a whole different mama. That is. A nice river wide barbel. Look at the big paddle tail it's got on it here. Big dorsal, I love these dorsals. Orange fins, which you can see here standing out there. White belly, gold flanks. Big eye, I mean, they are a superb fish, are they not? And you know why I call this? And the last one, the lucky hoodie. Oh, don't thrash, don't thrash, don't thrash. No, 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 you're going back in a minute. Calm down. Look at that one. <laughs> so pleased. Lucky and I was just about getting ready. I've packed a load of stuff up already. But of course, as all barbel fishermen know, as the light fades, this is when these critters come out to feed. Absolute beautiful fish. Get it straight back. Always make sure to recover. Off he goes, no problems. Get in. Totally awesome strikes again. Right, what I was doing i was just getting myself adjusted like this. Putting the microphone clip on and balancing the camera on my knee as a new camera angle when the rod went pizzazz. And that is barbel fishing at dusk. Now, I've got a floodlight. You can't knife, <coughs> you can't knife fish here, but the bailiff said to hang on till dusk. Listen, I've barbel fished a long time. You don't need to tell me barbel fishing is dusk. I know that. That's when you've got to really, really watch the rods, whether I've got buzzer bite indicators on there or not. That's when you say, bye bye rod, if you look away. Smith up there. No, sorry, it's my, uh, my trolley, my sack barrow. Anyway, what I wanted to say was, it seemed bizarre that I've sat here for six 
hours. Piled with the bait in. We know the small fish are eating the bait. Why did those barbel not show? Is it the sun? Now another bailiff, Mick, came round and was telling me when it goes clear sky like this, generally they get locked jaw and if it gets cold and the air gets cold quickly, it radiates off. That's the end of it. But I totally agree with it. I found that especially beach fishing, it can be really, you know, the end of a trip. And yet here we are, 5.30 and 10 past six, and two barbel, one of which was a nice barbel. So pleased, so pleased to get those fish, I can't tell you. I mean, it's what, worth waiting for, as I say. I reckon, honestly reckon, one barbel is worth five chub. I like catching chub, don't get me wrong, I'm not deriding the chub. I'm just saying a barbel, to me, personally, worth a lot more. Now the pinnacle, the pinnacle of it is for me, wading in a pair of chest waders, having a pouch, feeding the maggots or sweet corn or whatever you want, down through channels in the stream of weed and seeing the barbel flashing and turning over your bait and then running a float through a gap in the stream of weed and seeing that float flash under, wham. That for me is the absolute pinnacle, probably because I did it when I was like 14 years old. I can remember my very first barbel. I was fishing with my dad, it was on the royalty, when the royalty was really, really in its heyday in the 60s, late 60s I was there, and had um, a six pound barbel trotting on a float and my dad the same night had a four pound, same night, evening like now, uh, a four pound chub. That was me done. That one barbel sold my brain and cooked it totally on barbel fishing with a float. This is the way you do it. You lose a few feeders in the bottom because it's a big boulder strewn river and floods hugely. I mean, like I don't know, 10 feet. It's like the Bristol Channel here. I could probably catch some cod when it's flooded, I should think. And he runs into the Bristol Channel. I think, I don't know, somebody tell me. So if you are barbel fishing, so many people do it, they go home too early. Now I know they have to go to work, I know they have to drive a long way. I've come two and three quarter hours for here. Um, okay, I'm going to stay overnight in the B&B. &B. But always, always, if you can, guys, push yourself to the last bit of dusk. Check. I always ask the bailiff, what time can I fish to? They say 6.30, quarter to 7, 4 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, depending on the time of year and get the best out of that day because that rod could fold at the very last moment, especially as dusk is just going. And that's what we got here. I have no idea why those fish, have those fish, for instance, people, have those fish been in that swim all day and just not bothered feeding because it's bright? Or have they been tucked up over in the dark, over the edges there, and then they've moved out and started feeding because dusk is coming? And obviously perhaps they feed naturally through the light, I don't know. Been a perch down here, a decent sized perch, feeding on all these minnows that I've been playing with and feeding, he's been erupting and splashing there. I don't think it's a pike, I think it's a big perch. Big perch to three and a half pounds, they tell me here, to go drop shotting in the town is the, is the end thing. So the wind has gone away, tomorrow's supposed to be very hot with a southerly wind, and then a mega storm, the third biggest storm of the year coming here in the UK. That'll be gales, up here will be rain, Rain floods this really fast. It comes off the uh, mountains, I guess off the Brecon Beacons, the Welsh mountains, all up the valleys. Uh, and that's the end of that. When it finds down after that, you know, when the, you get the colour and it comes out, they tell me this is the best time, like most of it, when it's finding down and it's got a bit of colour in it. Now, apparently downstream, they've been really struggling today. We hear this by the bailiffs on the intercom. So I thought I was doing bad. Some of those guys have gone home. Maybe they should have stayed on for the last knockings. But the bailiffs tell me it's because it's too clear. The water is too clear. So is this what it's all about, water clarity? So fingers crossed I've got a chance of... Probably got 25, 30 minutes left, so every chance that rod might buckle over again. If it does, I don't honestly think it'll be a chub. When it gets dust like this, I think it will be a barbel. I certainly hope so. You can see here it's an idyllic setting, and this is classic. The wind's gone down. <clears throat> the rod tops are motionless, and the thing is, guys, with barbel, you don't get look, you don't get tweet, tweet, tweet. You're not getting this all the time, like you would do on a still water. The rod top is either moving <laughs> out of the rod vest or it's not moving. There's no in between with barbel. You definitely usually know when you've got a barbel bite, especially close range. I'm long range here, but close range, bam, the rod's right over. Because I'm going to have to go back, time I get back to the car, be pitch black, but I have bought, bought one of these little things to use carping. It's one of those small head torches. And then if you are, some places let you barbel fish at night, this place doesn't, but some do. 
if you're on club waters, you can use this red light, which, which you can still bait up with like this. You can still bait up, but you don't upset other anglers. I personally don't think lights upset fish. I think they upset anglers more than they upset fish. But you've got this little stealth mode, you can have it. And then obviously if I'm walking through the jungle, which I'm going to have to via gates, I'll be using the full size beam. Always handy, always take one with you pocket wise. Otherwise you're going to leave gear all over the riverbank, rod rest especially. You're on both clear on both of those. You can sometimes, I suppose, it's laying on the bottom. Here's the feeder, here's your hook bait. If you bump it, it makes that, if they're looking at it, it makes that hook bait just swirl around in the current, look loose, and they zoom in and grab it. That could be the theory, I don't know. Maybe some matchman will tell us. But just bump the, oh, look, 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 look. Oh, I missed it, I was too keen. Did you see that go down? That was just after bumping it. Maybe it is a matchman's thing. Now I'm gonna be doing that again for sure. I do it all the time when I'm uh, lake fishing. But generally here, because of the number of boulders, I don't like moving it too much, but you saw that. Hopefully you might even have seen that on camera. The fact I just gave it a little bump. There's obviously nothing in the feeder, but he just moved the pellet enough. I was just, I should have let that bite develop and let them get hold of it. Ground bait's going a little bit dry here, guys, but listen, I'm not bothered it's gonna come out and I'll use the rest tomorrow. Right, out we go, out we go, out we go. Do not take your eyes off this other rod. I should have let that bite develop, shouldn't I? Should have let it develop. This is a pig to cast on this. This swim is not a nice swim at all. I think I'm a bit short. Not myself personally, although I am only five foot seven or something like that. <laughs> when I used to get big game fishing, people used to, no, I used to write a lot about big game fishing. And I know people used to think, he's for some big, rough, tough, big game fishing. Went, no, no, I just had a good fish fighting technique. I'd caught an awful lot of big marlin and sharks. And they mostly would shake hands. And I think they thought, oh, I was a bit disappointed. I thought you'd be six foot seven and 24 stone. Uh, no. That's got nothing to do with fighting big fish, it's all down to technique. Come on fish. Well, here we are back on the riverbank. And you can see here, hopefully, come up here behind me. Lots and lots of mist fog. Not really fog, it's going to burn off. They're giving a very good weather forecast. I'm going to go down further than I've even been before. There's a spot there that Mick the bailiff said, I call it the cattle drink. I did look at it, but I was a bit bothered about the cattle coming in there. But he figures he showed me exactly where to cast. And let's see if this is going to work out. Going to get the car loaded up and they're going to hit the wheelbarrow and the riverbank. A flat tyre, bumpy fields is not good. Well, here we are, people. Here's the swim. When I come down to look at it yesterday with Mick, I would definitely, definitely have fished at the top end where the faster flow is. But he said it's very shallow in there, it's a very good trotting area. Might have a go float fishing later, so let's get down there. And in total contrast, oh, hang on, I've got a runaway trolley. That was close, that was close. Flat tires, soft mud, even better. I would have gone up there to be honest. Oh dear, now I can't see where Mix had cast to. Yes, I can. So Mix had come right down the bottom end of this cattle drink swim, I'm going to call it. Which is handy, because the cattle come in there. Oh, let's get my coat off. There is typical River Y Valley. Sun trying to break through the mist. Anyway, I'll show you later on, but over there, somewhere in that fog, is a snag by a U-shaped tree and a clear spot by a sawn off willow. And he says, just down the back there. Always used to historically, years ago, be a good, good barbel swim. So I'm aiming to go, if I did go float fishing, is to go probably wade in about here and then just run the float right down that little crease there on the edge. We're going to need waders to get out. It's quite fast current there. I might pick up chub, might even get a few days. That's if I get bored trying for the barbel. Right, let's get rigged up. Well, I've actually got uh, my two rods out there. Believe it or not, guys, first cast, I got hung up in a snag or weed lost the hook link, didn't lose the feeder luckily. So even though I cast where Mick said cast, <laughs> there's still a snag or there's weed or there's something there. 
Um, <clears throat> what I'm tempted to do, because I have actually got my waders with me here, and I've rigged up a float rod. It's, I haven't got any match rod, it's just a spare Avon rod, and I've got a float that's taken a treble A there, you might be able to see it, just like a, a very, it's about a 30 year old float that one's a collector's piece. And I might just wade out there, drop some balls of ground bait with stones inside it, <clears throat> because it's so lovely and clear. And then I might be able to see what fish come up behind it. It'll only be small fish, dace, might be a few roach, I don't know. Probably a bit faster roach here. Might not be dace, <clears throat> but I might get small chub. When I wade out there, I'm just waiting for the sun to come up a bit more. And that way I can see wade out and just drop the balls of ground bait and put stones inside them so they don't roll away. I'll show you what I'm going to do, but I've got to give it a bit about 45, 40 minutes in the water, no bites. But sun is burning off beautifully. One thing I do miss is seeing a few bumps and bangs there. That's what I do like to see, even if I miss, uh, miss it, you know, line bites or something to tell me the fish are there. I feel a sunbathing session coming here. So nothing happened, I'm just going to go up with my bag of ground bait, my little bucket of ground bait, up this top end and just wade out and drop some balls of ground bait in there, somewhere that I might be able to get an even film to be honest. I'm going to use this tuft of grass as my line, so what I'm going to do is make some balls of ground bait up like this. They've got pellets, pellets in them as well. Not too big because I don't want them rolling away if they do roll away. I reckon about four. But what we used to use years ago for barbel, and I'm not fishing for barbel at the moment, I'm just going to have a go with a float, I think. I've wound the other rods in. Just like I say, give the swim a rest, it hasn't exactly been hammered, has it? Four balls of ground bait. I might be able to get a bit of footage or something. And then, look, see, I put stones inside them, like this. Squeeze them nice and tight. Bit old school, this just a bit old school. I know the modern one guys go, Oh, I've never fished like that. But I'm not so I'm going to catch it. I'm just saying, This is how I used to fish as a youngster many years ago, too many years ago. I know everybody has different modern techniques, and that I just like trying the old stuff, I'm not trying to find stones, boy things. All right, get these four squeezed up, I'll get them out there. Very, very shallow here, I see what they mean. Like very fast and very shallow. One does not need to get knocked off one's feet here. I'm looking for a bit of an outside ledge. There's some weed up here. Oh, I've got polarising glasses so I can see this. Also see when I'm going to get a booty as well. Wow, this is very shallow out here. Look how far out I'm coming, guys. I think that's about the edge of Chub here. Here's the main current. So I'm just going to lob these. Just an interesting scenario. Now look at that rolling down of the current. Eventually that will stop there. So it shows you I threw it in here. It's gone down four feet before it's even stopped. Check that one out. You guys might be able to see it. Depends how the current catches it. Pretty much the same area. That one should go below the other balls. I may be wrong. It's still rolling. And I'll go one little bit further out. Now that one's held. I'm going to wade out there. And then what I'm going to do, just go on. just have a knee depth. Very, very clear here. But it drops away there fast. So if there's any small fish and chub, these are breaking up already. The stone's already out of that one. And you can see them tumbling along the bottom. I'll try and get you some underwater shots of that because it's quite inter I find it quite interesting anyway. Another thing I've always liked doing is stirring up the bottom. We actually used to do this more in the winter on spate rivers. Just stir it all up and it gets all the all the food. You probably see that. I might actually do that underwater and show you as well. And you'd be trotting down there with your stick float. If you go way down on the river with stick float and occasionally just wiggle it. It's like free ground bait because it disturbs all the bottom. Just wiggle your feet around. See all the silt and suspension. 
that's the stuff nowadays. Now this probably would have been a lot of clear, clear gravel, say a hundred years ago, because of all the silt that comes down. I'm just out from the bucket there. We'll come back and we'll look at that. I can do that with the camera as well. Beautiful clarity. One thing I like to do is to get out in the water, obviously not spook the fish, just see exactly what's going on. So I can show you here. If you look, you can see the particles of ground bait that are breaking up there. Yeah, you see it tumbling away and you'll notice a lot of it does not wash totally away, depending on the pace of the current. It will just break up and all those little bits and pieces of food settle in the gravel and that's what the barb will, you know, get in there and dig out. They do like clean gravel. Now, if I just go under the water, you see, this is how I can sort of, I can sort of set up a, a, a mini flood feeling for the fish because they love that when it's a bit of colour in the water. I mean, this is clear. And we used to do this years ago and just put a bit of colour in the water. Sometimes if you're float fishing, it can turn them on. Obviously, I want to get out um, upstream of where I baited. Just going to wade up here a good bit. Chuck a bit of bait down. That's loose feed as well. A few bits of pellets of little loose feed. Obviously, remembering what the line is that you're fishing. And then going to follow up with a piece of dog food and all I can do is put it in my pocket because normally you'd have a waste pouch or what we call a bait apron in match fishing terms I've no idea how long this is going to stay on this this dog food not very long I fear there might be one chub down there lunch of meat would be a lot better you guys might not be able to see this float running down I'll try and shield the camera. I'm letting a nice hang develop in the float there. So you can sort of hold it back a bit. Go right through the glare. Now I'm just letting it swing inside a bit, which bring it into the line where my ground bait is. And I'm just going to let this spill off the spool. Keeping an eye on the float. It's not the best direction with the sun in my eyes. But it's the best I can do at the moment. Just kind of a few few runs down with the float in case there's a chub there and what an idyllic setting anyways to be honest guys can't really grumble at this the water's going around the well not rather it's going around the waders rather than in the waders which is always good close the bail arm this bait's coming off as soon as I tighten up to it wind in and repeat the procedure and also, if I turn it this way, you can mould yourself a piece of ground bait paste. Nice and tight around the hook again, it only it only gonna last the one trot down. Because it's soft. If you have maggots or worms or sweet corn, you'll probably get two or three runs down with it. And I'm trying to right through the glare, hard to believe really. But you never know there might be a chub there. And then I'm gonna go down and try my alleged barbel swim and see if they like a bait running through. The chub might far more likely than the barbel to take a moving bait. So a lot of anglers actually do fish for a chub with a with the float. Miss, miss something then. So here, underwater, you can see that streamer weed. And that is so important for identifying good barbel swims, really, because there's a lot of movement. It, it sort of tells you the current. It's just like a hair that's waving underwater, like green hair. And you can see that the root is at the top end, and there's a gap underneath at the back. And that's what the barbel likes to be hanging under, especially with big mats of it. And that's where you'll be looking for gaps between beds of streamer weed. Now, it could be close in. You can see there's a lovely bed of streamer weed there. I want to be fishing between that and in that gap on the other side. And if I go up high, 
you can see there's loads and loads of bits of streamer weed. Now here's a big boulder. You would think that down the back where that gravel is settling, A, there's gold, and B, there's a salmon. Wrong. The salmon actually rests on the upstream end of a boulder because there's a pressure wave that creates just in front of the boulder. Just a point of interest. Well, boys, nothing on the old bites as far as the uh, ledges go. I didn't get anything on the float, but then I probably did, would have done much better with maggot. I've got the feeders both back out there. Hopefully you can, uh, guys can see them just there. See the line going down. Fact, look at that, there's a cobweb on hanging there. Both down, hopefully, in the snag-free territory. That's the, that's, that's the hope of it anyway. Nothing happening at all. But one little tip here, people. Even though I've got the drags backed a bit and I've got them on the buzzers, because I'm obviously messing about filming, sometimes I'm over there, sometimes I'm here turning away, whatever. I might be filming a piece of tackle. Uh, I can miss a bite. I do miss bites. I do lose fish because I'm doing this film and I'm losing fish all the time. It's just bumping off and whatever and I'm missing bites because I'm not fishing, basically. I just got two short rod breasts just down here, look just crossed so if this does crash down it's going to pull up against there see like that and it just is a sort of backup because then that will pull down they'll pull some line off and I won't uh, miss anything hopefully that's the theory so all I'm going to do now is just I'm going to leave the waders on in case I do get a barbel weeded because I don't know these swims this is the problem the locals there's five of the locals they know all the swims the snags the weed beds I don't so if I do get one hooked up, what you do with the barbel, especially with a feeder, if there's streamer weed growing like this and goes down, in fact you see it in around the water shots, it grows up and then it streams down like this. The barbel's going to try and dig up underneath that. Now if you drag the swim feeder into the head of the weed where the root is, nine times out of ten you won't get them out because you're pulling the swim feeder into the weed, you're putting it into the wind, upstream end of the weed. If you can get downstream of that barbel as he's digging, trying to get up under that weed bed, say from down there then you've got a good chance if you keep the pressure on it'll kick its way out if he really locks up solid don't just pull for a break because barbel are valuable fish a lot of the time you can get them out just slack off totally the fish will revitalize itself and just go to move away and then you tighten up quickly like this and keep the pressure on and maybe walk backwards rather than drop and wind because if you go to drop and wind as you go down to drop and wind that's that split second of slack rod that's all it takes for him to bury in the weed again so I tend to let them kick their way out. You've got to keep maximum pressure on. If I've got the waders on, I can go downstream down here and I can pull from the downstream, the bottom end of that stream of weed and pull those fish out. Hopefully, I don't even get one in the snag. Let's get one hooked up first, eh? The problem I've got is I did a six hour spell yesterday with not one solitary single bite. And although it's a fabulous bright day, I fear it might be last knockings again, that last one hour period, which as lovely as the day is, as a fisherman, can be a little bit boring. I like to see bumps, bangs, movement to know you're in the right place. I think all I can do, I'm not gonna use my ground bait balls today. Again, I don't know the swim. I'm just gonna keep feeding it, feeding it, feeding it, as long as I don't get snagged. Fingers crossed, we get a hook up. I think there's a guy fishing downstream as well. I think he's in the swim I was in. I'm trying to get clicked up at the same time, I was fighting a fish. I lost so many fish doing this messing around. I can't afford to miss anything today. The camera angles. Oh, he's stripping me out. I can feel the line coming out. I'm going to try and get him down that side for you. Maybe the light's better. If it's crooked, it's crooked. Oh, he's peeling me. I don't want to get him in, let him get me into a snag. And I've got to get under my other one. Just bear with me a second. Okay. I'm under the other rod, guys. I'm going to try and twist and turn. See if I can. It's about the length of my lead. That's all I can get. Oh, it's definitely not a chub. It's a barbel. The way, the way it's scrapping here. That's a barbel. My goodness me. I'd just like to get this one fish. It looks like a decent fish too. I just stood up, turned away, looked around. Rod's folded over. Oh, look at this, people. Here he comes, here he comes. Look at that one. This one. This 
was really good. This is a good fish. So lay still, pup. Wow, barbless hook it fell out. Oh, here he comes. Turn him up the right way now. People, what about that? That's worth waiting hours for. It took me hours to catch it, but look at this fish. Superb. Great fighting fish. I think I've switched my beepers off because I was filming underwater earlier on. I think I've switched them off, but look. That's a cracker. Well, well, well. As the saying goes, it ain't over till the fat barbel sings. Lovely fish. Let's get him back. One last look upon the greatest fighting fish we have in British rivers. And I think I've got a nice belly on him too, he's fattening up for the winter. Let's take him back and get him in the current. Get him recovered. I'm just going to hold him there to get him up the right way, give him enough water. Another ha handy reason here, as you can see up there, look, on that beach, very, very, very shallow. We're just going to let this guy recover. Going to make sure he's up the right way. And away he goes. What a superb fish. Just checking on, make sure he's all okay. Those gills are going. Boom. Well, result after all that waiting. You know why? Because up there, I believe the sun is going behind the trees. Well, it's turned into a really nice looking evening. A really nice looking evening. Look at this. But the fishing is nothing short of a dire. I just talked to another guy in the swim down there. I think he had one barbel and a chub or two chub. Way up in the fields up there, two barbel. Way, way down below, three or four chub amongst four or five anglers, I think it was. So, not great, not great. So, wait, it's all blaming clarity, water clarity, clarity there. So, I've got the barbel I wanted, but you know what fishermen like? Always want another one, don't you? It certainly looks apart. But the guy, he was a local, the one next to me here, and he said he's uh, going to pack up and go now, even though it's, uh, it's just getting to the witchy now, because he said they very often don't, you know, they don't uh, kick off at night when it gets dusk. Um, clear sky, temperature changes, stuff like that. I, on the other hand, have absolutely no choice, because I've got, I don't know, 150 miles to drive. I'm in the B&B again tonight, so I might as well just tough it out till I uh, can't see the rod top. And then I've got uh, the wheelbarrow push with a flat tyre. Really impressed. Flat tyre, bumpy field. Not looking forward to it at all, guys. I was happy where I was, but after bed and breakfast the next morning, I got up and before driving home, I drove to a stretch of the river way, way out, way upstream. And it was a trip well spent because I found an angler hooked up to a barbel. Not bad, I'm a catch a fish with Graham. Yeah, you'll be able to film as well. I haven't got much space on the television screen here, the monitor. <laughs> yeah, that's a good barbel bite. Yeah. That's a barbel, yeah. So first fish of this session? Yeah, that first barbell. That's a lovely looker. Brilliant fish. And you're feeding hemp and stuff? Feeding hemp, yeah. Well, I tell you what, I'm glad I walked up here. I've seen more barbell caught than, <laughs> <laughs> than I have for the last two days. Brilliant, I'm glad you come as well. This is a feeder I'm using. It's uh, closed at one end for you, open at the other end. This is about a three ounce feeder, but you, you can get them in uh, multiple sizes, I think all the way from half an ounce up to about four ounces. So what I do, why I like this feeder, close at one end, is I like to put a bit of hemp in it first. Put that down, and then a bit of ground bit, and I'll pack it in and hold the hemp in. 
and then once the flow will come through there, wash all the ground bit out in the hemp bud and slowly trickle some hemp through the swim and uh, draw the barbel and the chub up into the swim onto your bit. And it lays nice and flat that one? Yeah, it lays nice and flat and it kind of hugs the bottom a bit more than a traditional uh, open feeder. And what's your feed in there, that, that, that red? What is in that? In there, they think it's, uh, it's krill, yep. krill ground bit, I think. Um, I'm not sure what else, I think it's just krill. Yeah, just straight krill, krill yeah. Krill, and I got some hemp in there, some four mil pellets and a couple of eight mils, and uh, and yeah, that's it really. That's I can smell it from here. Is yeah, it? very smelly, key for barbel, I think. And then distance-wise, where are you throwing that out? About three quarters out to the river, uh, just into a bit of the faster flow. Where so just where the leaves are, yeah, yeah? just where the leaves are, into a bit of a deeper hole, I think, out there. Well, while up at this river, that you can actually drive to, you can get your car up there, you can see it's just a giant van for another angler that has spinning wheels and Graham is trying to drag him out with his poor old Peugeot estate. The guy had uh, back right down too close to the river, paid a terrible price and I was the last person going home other than him. In fact, if I hadn't attempted to get him out, I think he'd still be there now. But after a few pulls on my poor old clutch, I've already burnt two out towing the boat, he gets the big, totally awesome towing, yank. Uh-oh, it's going to come in a minute. Graham's going to lose his temper. Here comes the slack. Boom. Yanked out this two-ton van. The guy goes home happy, and Graham goes home with no clutch. But listen, I've enjoyed it. So I want to kick off now by saying thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell if you want to know when a film goes up. Little bell thing, so Mike tells me ding-dongs and tells you exactly when the film's up. Look out for Mike's TA Outdoors, and hopefully we'll see you out here on the river, maybe on a lake, maybe off a beach, maybe in a boat. Who knows? <laughs>